uh, thank you very much for introducing me to all the uh, all the participants on the webinar today. I just noticed uh, that my co-founder uh, has taken some time also, and he's present. So, Krishanu Seal, uh, uh, a very dear friend, uh, a great uh, technologist and a data scientist, having a uh, you know, great experience globally working with many different organizations and making great contribution is, is also present with us. So thanks, Krishanu, for, for being uh, here on this call as well. Uh, Absolutely. Great to be here. Thanks, Manchu. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I also uh, would want to express my sincere thanks to Praveen and all the uh, members of the coffee board who have given me this opportunity to share some of the thoughts. Uh, that we have been experiencing and observing uh, in the market since we started our uh, startup uh, agrico technologies. Uh, so, uh, looking from the flow perspective, uh, uh, Praveen uh, and the team member who is here from Praveen's team, uh, I should take uh, for next half an hour or so the you know the slides that that I have, and then we would open it up for the. Question and answers, is that correct, please? Yeah, yes, sir. Yes, sir. So we can uh, start presentation followed right. by Q&A. Okay. And I request participants to mute their uh, microphone during the session so that we can avoid any background disturbance. Okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Praveen. So look, uh, the first chart, and uh, I think uh, you would be helping me with the changing the charts here, please. The next slide, please. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You just let us know when to move to the next slide. All right. Thank you. Yeah. I'll be the next slide. I'll be the One next minutes. slide. Yes, yeah. One minute, sir. Sure. So, so while we get to the next uh, slide over here, essentially in the next slide, what I wanted to highlight about what are the key challenges, what are the key difficulties that the agri ecosystem has been facing in the country today? What we got to recognize that in the agriculture ecosystem, the core stakeholder of that ecosystem, which is the farmer, and India currently has roughly, I mean, you go by different statistics, so you'd find that the figures would be ranging from uh, 12, 120 million to 150 million, uh, and they're contributing significantly into the overall GDP of the country to the tune of around 17%. But for India to uh, become a developed country, uh, this contribution should look uh, more in the late 20s. Uh, so it should be in the range of around 27 to 32 percent, uh, which means that there is a lot of headroom which is available for this particular sector in terms of uh, improving its efficiency, in terms of improving its productivity. Uh, what also is very unique uh, about this particular uh, agriculture sector is that the, you know, amongst these 150 million farmers that we have, around 85% of them can be classified as the small and marginal farmers, which by definition means that they have small farm holdings, less than two acres. Uh, and that makes it pretty unique uh, if you look at, and, and I'm just kind of keeping the benchmark with the countries which have higher productivity and the higher efficiency in terms of the agriculture output and the agriculture sector contribution to their overall GDP. And, uh, but, but that's the uniqueness that we, we have about uh, the agriculture sector and they're in the core uh, stakeholder that is the farmer. And, and that brings out uh, very different kind of challenges uh, in, in this particular industry for us. Uh, the first key issue that our farmers and then before I get over there, look, I mean, today also when we, today also we keep hearing about the issues uh, related with the farmer suicides. We keep hearing about that the farmers who had a bumper crop, you know, harvest, they ended up putting all their harvest onto the roads. So essentially 
the problems which were existing uh, two decades ago uh, seem to be remaining even today. Uh, and, and farmers have not got benefited by any of the, uh, you know, technology intervention or any of the program or projects or scheme interventions, especially on the market linkages side, that how do they get the best realization for the harvest that they have? So market access, market linkages, that is the foremost issue that the farmers face. And that is related with uh, one single issue that can we bring up more options for a farmer in India uh, to evaluate and see that which option to pick up that gives him a better market access, a better market linkage from the perspective of getting the better realization for his or her crop. Uh, so that's the that's the first challenge that, that I will point out. The second challenge uh, I would talk about is that there is no single resource that a small and a marginal farmer. Keep in mind that 85% of the farmer in India uh, are small and marginal. They don't have any single source uh, for information. Now, what does this information I'm relating it with? Only which is associated with the agriculture. That how could the farmer, how could a farmer cut down his cultivation cost? How could he increase the productivity and how he could get better realization? Only on three parameters if I have to look at cutting down the, the, the cost of production, cost of cultivation rather, uh, how to increase the yield, and then how to get the better realization of the harvest. Uh, he doesn't have any single source. Was there any question there? No, okay. All right, uh, so, so, so that's, that's, that's one part. Uh, there's no single source of information. information is in, in, in different places, which a, a marginal farmer doesn't have access to. And the next ex aspect to it is that it's not personalized. It's not on the basis of what that small farmer has in terms of his farm assets, in terms of the kind of farm that he has, uh, the kind of weather uh, that, that he has on his farm, the kind of demand uh, for any particular crop, around his area or in the country or in the state where he's present. Uh, so he doesn't have any sort of a personalized recommendation for him or her. Uh, and third point, which is very critical, and I would be sort of relating each of these points from the data perspective. Uh, as, as I mentioned that all these, uh, you know, recommendations which come from the government currently, either from the state or from the central government, they are at a uh, sort of a district level. Now at a district level, you are talking roughly in the range of around 2,500 to 3,000 farmers minimum, you know. So that sort of a generic recommendation is not going to really help anyone uh, in terms of taking certain, uh, you know, certain activities which are going to help him or her uh, in a significant way. Uh, there is some, some general trend that one can get to know, but then beyond that, the person would be, uh, the farmer would not get benefited out of it. Uh, and, and the third part uh, then come is that even with the newer innovations which are happening in, in the agri side, I mean, there are some very good innovations happening. For example, there are innovations in the precision farming area. Uh, there have been uh, drones which have been very effectively used in the farming. There have been uh, very effective use one can see from the satellite imagery perspective and the remote applications. But the problem uh, that the farmer is facing today, again, small and marginal farmer, that for accessing these kind of innovations and you know, taking the benefits of this innovation, which can help him on those three things, as I mentioned, cutting down the, the cost of cultivation, increasing the yield, and uh, getting the best uh, realization for the harvest, uh, he would have to have maybe around 15 different apps. He would have to be a part of maybe 10 different WhatsApp groups. And that itself becomes a non-starter for any of the farmer, even if he is a educated one and he is uh, someone who can, uh, who has been using smartphones very effectively uh, to make use of these innovations because uh, all these innovations are sort of points 
uh, innovations uh, in 55 to 57 different activities a farmer would be doing for completing the, com uh, you know, the uh, agri cycle right from sowing of the seed to getting the uh, best realization for his uh, harvest. Uh, it's, it's, it's impossible for any of uh, the farmer to have 15 different apps and and sort of, you know, work. Uh, with with all of those to get the benefit of those innovations. So that's the the third one that I think I would highlight. Uh, so I will keep myself on on these three key challenges that the industry has been facing. Uh, one more uh, part I think I would mention, and and that is related with the third point that I mentioned was, uh, is is the absence of small and marginal farmers onto the digital journey, right? Uh, we have seen we have seen the digital journey uh, in many other sectors uh, right up to the last uh, mile actor, the last mile node of that particular industry uh, ecosystem or the value chain has started happening. But I think the, the progress uh, is in the agri sector in particular has been slow. And the reason again is, is, is so many disparate innovations not linked together, not having a view of the ecosystem as a whole, looking at it as a systemic challenge. Uh, it, these things have not been really addressed. Uh, so, so that is the fourth challenge I think I would highlight. So these are the four key challenges that we have observed in our journey so far uh, with the agri ecosystem. Uh, next slide, please. Now, as, as I mentioned that uh, it, when we started looking at uh, what this agri ecosystem looked like, we found that there are these five key uh, stakeholders in the ecosystem. The core being the farmer, and, and I will start sort of defining the persona here. Uh, from, from our perspective, we were looking at the farmer uh, who is, let's say, below 45 years of age, uh, someone who is, uh, let's say, at least uh, secondary, uh, has has studied up to the secondary level or up to age standard, uh, has access to smartphone, uh, has been using smartphone for WhatsApp groups, or goes and sees, uh, you know, a few of these uh, YouTube, which are uh, which are focused on the agri uh, sector, uh, and and has a desire to do. A few things which which help not only his uh, his 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 agriculture, uh, but also how the technology could be useful for his family. Uh, so that's the kind of persona as we are defining as as a stakeholder out here. Um, the second one is the aggregator of the farmers. What we also found that uh, there is a sort of a system that works uh, in the villages in in the country today. Where either there are informal uh, sort of uh, organizations, aggregators of the farmer, it could be within a village, there are 15 or 20 farmers who have come together and they, you may call them as a farmer interest group, or you may just call them any sort of uh, organization as a cooperative. They could be a formal private limited company, which the government of India and also the state governments are actually looking at. These are the farmer producers organizations or farmer producers companies. Uh, so these aggregators are showing up uh, and, and these aggregators are essentially uh, looking to leverage the, 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 uh, the benefits of, of aggregation, uh, both in terms of when they have to buy the farm inputs and also when the farmers want to sell their produce. So how the, the power of aggregation can be leveraged, uh, leveraged is, is something that, that they want to to, to really uh, sort of achieve through these um, aggregators. Uh, and then uh, we have put them as farmer producers organization here. Uh, the third stakeholders, uh, of course, are the suppliers. These could be the farm input suppliers who are supplying the seeds, fertilizers. They're supplying, uh, including the farm implements uh, like uh, the harvesters, the tractors, the sprinklers, the tunnels, uh, and things like those. <clears throat> And uh, then you, of course, have the buyers. Uh, these could be the local buyers. These could be the large uh, institutional buyers who buy produce from the farmers. Uh, I'm discounting the APMCs out here. These are the Mondays uh, 
we are not uh, sort of classifying as the buyer because they are again uh, a node in the uh, in the uh, let's say downstream of the agri value chain. Um, so we are not considering them amongst the buyers, but uh, these are the, the the buyers who, as I said, are the local buyers or the retail buyers or the uh, large institutional buyers. And the fifth one that we looked at very seriously in the entire ecosystem was the partners. Again, uh, completely directing ourselves towards the innovations which have happened uh, in the agri sector, that how these innovations are, are really, uh, how, do, how those innovators services, uh, and, and the idea was that how those services that we could get it to the farmers. So they become uh, again, a very key stakeholders the way we looked at the agri ecosystem. And then uh, keeping these five as the key stakeholders, again, farmer as the core of it. Uh, the next slide, please. We looked at building this entire ecosystem, uh, entire solution uh, for addressing the challenges that outlined in my first chart. Uh, and the idea was that we, we, as I mentioned, that we decided to look uh, to address these challenges uh looking at the entire ecosystem as a whole not really uh keeping ourselves to solve uh, for one particular stakeholders because our belief has been that all these stakeholders are linked together and if we just focus our solution for one stakeholders it is unlikely to provide a sustainable solution for the farmer to address the three uh key uh you know the challenges that that i had outlined the key three uh, uh, challenges that we want to address uh, from the perspective of cutting down the cost, increasing the yield, and then getting the best realization. So approaching the ecosystem as a whole, uh, and that suggests in the name that we have for our company, Agriculture Ecosystem, therefore Agrico, uh, we built uh, an intelligent, yeah, we, we built an intelligent, uh, and what we call is a full circle, which essentially uh, many of us uh, say from end to end perspective, that is addressing the upstream, the midstream and the downstream of, of agri value chain, uh, covering all the three streams uh, and therefore the full circle platform. Um, and we created this platform. It's a digital multi sided uh, digital platform, which is based in AI and ML uh, because data is what we are completely focused on. We want to really uh, you know, work with the, the ground truth and uh, provide those personalized recommendations to address the four uh, major uh, challenges that we outlined in our uh, in, in the beginning of this presentation. Uh, we also thought that if we have to cover all those 54 activities, there are three key areas that we need to cover through our multi-sided digital platform. The first aspect of it, of course, the data collection. The second aspect of it uh, was with respect to the personalized recommendation, which is on the basis of the data that we collect. And then how do we get the best personalized recommendations, which essentially from the output perspective, provide the different options for the farmer to exercise, uh, for which we tied up with the universities and with the agri labs so that we have access to the experts who could look through those data and then can actually provide actionable uh, advisory uh, and recommendations to uh, which are personalized to each of the farmers who are who are who are accessing uh, our platform. Um, the second activity that we we realize that we need to definitely provide uh, is is a marketplace, uh, a marketplace where a farmer uh, has access. Uh, in terms of different options uh, from the farm input perspective. Uh, so a farmer, which typically today also what we realize that 65% of the farmers, anywhere from 60 to 70% of the farmers are actually going to the same retailer, are going to the same shop, which is near to their village, uh, which their grandfather was also going to. You know, it's, it's just the generations have changed in, in from the buyer and the seller perspective, but uh, the new options have not emerged uh, and that again limits, uh, you know, that how much innovation in terms of all the farm inputs are actually reaching to the farmers 
uh, and how much information for that matter has been reaching to the farmer to really exercise all the new innovations which have happened uh, with respect to the seeds and fertilizers and other things because the inventory takes over for that particular retail shop to to really determine what they are going to sell uh, so so there, there's a lot of j factor out there which happens uh, and, and technology can definitely make a lot of difference up there so just to uh, to stay there uh, that was the marketplace aspect of it that how do we build uh, different options for farmer and uh, with the personal recommendation that the farmer has the farmer could actually exercise his option uh, same goes for the farm implements and on the output side on the market linkages side as well uh, we have created kind of a marketplace which is auction driven and we are leveraging uh, the, the aspect of the producers organization, the aggregators, that how truly we can enable them through the technology to, 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 uh, to, to, to take the leverage of the aggregation to, to really realize uh, the power of aggregation and get the best uh, for their farmers. Because uh, as you would see that the producers organizations, especially the farmer producers organizations are nothing else, but the, the aggregators who have come, different farmers who have come together as a shareholder in that particular company. So if the FPO is actually started making money, uh, that is resulting into second source of revenue for all the farmers being the shareholder of that particular company, uh, the FPO. Uh, so, so that's that's the part, uh, that's the second uh, major part that we have done um, in terms of the recommendation engine, the, the data collection recommendation and the advisory engine, the marketplace part of it. Um, and, and the third part is uh, in terms of uh, really expanding the entire market, you know, for for uh, the farmers, for the farmer producers organization and digitalizing the different use cases and the supply chains that we have uh, and, and without becoming a node by ourselves in, in those supply chains. So we did we do realize that there are certain relationships that do exist in the current uh, uh, process of acquiring farm inputs by the farmers. And therefore, we need to give a chance, we need to really sort of enable uh, those supply chains also to become more formalized, to become uh, digital uh, and start using the digital processes to become, uh, to, to get the advantages of that. And therefore, uh, this, this wholesaler, retailer and the farmer this supply chain also we have completely digitalized. Uh, and we have digitalized this entire supply chain from the perspective that we stay low asset. Uh, we don't become uh, a node by ourselves in that supply chain uh, and, and adding more cost out there or get driven uh, only from the monetary perspective because we do keep in mind uh, the three things that, that I outlined right at the beginning and have been repeating that. Uh, so keeping that in mind and keeping in mind that who we are serving at the end of the day, we are serving, uh, you know, that small and marginal farmer, that Nanu Ramji, that Fool Matiji, that Ram Sarubji, who has got only two bigger of land. Uh, and, and we need to really see that we need to make the contributions to, to his efforts, to her efforts out there. Um, the other part, uh, the data, which is, which is at every step of uh, doing things that we are doing. <clears throat> We are building the options. We are building options for the farmers, where he could go and sell, what he should be buying, what would be the demand, uh, which crop he should be taking. Uh, so, so these ML models uh, we have built, we have created. Uh, Krishanu, my co-founder, is 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 leading this this entire effort. And uh, uh, Krishanu, if uh, if I may request, if if you could uh, just add uh, from from our data and and from the uh you know forecasting models and the other ml efforts that that we are doing uh that would be great sure yeah i'm mean, happy to so um sorry so Kishan, uh, should i get on to the next chart which which uh, shows those uh um yes okay so let's get to the next slide please Next slide, please. All right, yeah, we can move to the next, please. Next, please. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, yes. Yeah, this is good. So, um, am I audible? Yes, Krishan. Awesome. So, yeah, as, um, as Manju just outlined, you know, our whole approach has been really mixing in what we call, you know, the, the structural data about how these farmers and their, their, their uh, farms are participating in the whole process of, uh, you know, in, in producing crops and uh, the yield. Um, we call that the structural data. And, we, and then on top of that, we add what we call the process of the operational data, right? And together we are mixing this into a, actually the previous slide, uh, yeah. We just went one slide forward, yeah, thank you. So in this slide, what we are saying is, we are taking the two, uh, the, the, the two aspects of the structural and the process data and mixing it together. Um, actually, the previous slide, please, not this one. Maybe there's a bit of a lag, but I'm seeing the next slide already. This is the consolidated visibility. Um, yeah, in this slide, if you see what we are adding these two aspects into our machine learning model, we look at pa past data for all of this, whether we're looking at ambient, uh, you know, weather, uh, the soil data, as well as the actual management of the crop, like what practices are these farmers employing for the management of their crop? Like, you know, how many times, what, what mode of uh, irrigation do they use? Um, what's the, what's the uh, parameters for the, uh, you know, for the number of times that they are irrigating? What time of the day are they, are they uh, irrigating? When are they applying fertilizers or manures or what other so crop management practices are being used. All of this is what we call process data, right? Which, which lets us then calibrate our machine learning model to then compute a, an actual estimate for the quality and the, and the quantity of the yield, right? Uh, what we call the quality mean the grade of the yield. Um, and as Manchu already mentioned, we are already looking at the trends of each of these crops being sold at different market linkages that, uh, that these farmers currently operate in. And we are able to then uh, come up with expected prices uh, that the farmer should, uh, should sell these at various, uh, you know, the various outlets, whether it's Mondays or, or the APMCs, wherever, we are able to then give that as a very personalized recommendation to the, to the farmer, saying that, you know, given our understanding of your process, your farm's output, we believe that this is where you can get the best price um, and, and sometimes we are actually recommending them to even hold that in a warehouse in the anticipation of a better price that our model is expected to, um, you know, knows about. So, so that's what uh, we really mean by the database decision making process here. And if you go to the next slide, please. Yeah, on this slide. Um, and, and as Manju mentioned, one of the important stakeholders for us is the farm producers organization, where what we are showing you is for the first time, uh, you know, so all, all this time, these, these, these organizations are really operating what we'd like to say they're flying blind because they really don't have a very good handle on what is the amount of, you know, a particular produce that is expected from the entire network of farmers that this FPO is managing, right? So because all of these farms are now on the agrico platform and the entire process, the entire, you know, uh, the entire uh, crop and how much of it has been grown in, in what, how much area acreage has been grown, etc. All of that is now visible on this, um, on this platform. The FPO gets to see a consolidated view of the entire community, the entire network of say 1,500 farmers and be able to then say that I'm expecting a particular yield of this particular grade and this particular quantity at this point in time, maybe two months, three months down the line. And so therefore it gives him a special lever, negotiate a, a, like an output price, right? Um, for for, the, for on the, on behalf of the farmers, right? So this is a massive, uh, you know, uh, you know, intervention that the FPO is able to provide in the current supply chain, right? Where 
they are they, whether without this visibility they don't really know how much of what is expected when right so this is what we are trying to show in this slide that our platform actually gives you that visibility very clearly to the fp yeah next slide please right so this is something himanshu has already spoken about uh, we are we are using our system to compute where should the where should the farmer be going to uh, to sell to for his market uh, you know linkages to sell his produce and we compute this based on you know the the price at the mandi that we know of the price price of the amcs that we know of and factoring in the fa the the cost of transportation to these places so up in this particular example i don't know if you can see it in this slide very well but you oh, know we can, uh, we can move to the next slide i think there we have that covered so next slide please sure next slide yeah yeah so this is a good one so here what we are saying is you know which money do we sell to right and we're factoring in the price of the transport as well as you know the other decisions to whether to hold the 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 hold the uh, you know the output in the, in a warehouse etc and uh, we we are actually advising them that you will be better off instead of selling it right away better off to hold it because we expect the price to be this much at this particular mandi so even though you may have found something nearby and you were tempted to go sell it we might be advising you to hold it to go sell somewhere else because we know that that's what's coming so that's the kind of data based you know forecasted models that we are applying to give you these very clear pointed recommendations next slide please all right yeah. so himanshu so, i'll let you go with these yeah okay uh, yeah, yeah. Thanks, uh, Krishado. So, so look, I mean, so that's the the big part of what we are uh, doing with our multi-sided digital platform, which is with the data part of it, and and how at every step of our interaction with any of the key stakeholders uh, on our digital platform, we are very focused on the data, uh, and then what do we do of this data uh, through the different kind of algorithms that have been built that as an output we provide to these stakeholders uh, something which is actionable and if they action those things uh, they are going to get benefited and meet their uh, you know respective objectives uh, so so that's that's a very sort of a, an approach that we have taken to provide personalized uh, uh, recommendations uh, advisories uh, actionable sort of a, uh, you know uh, recommendations for, for them to take now, the next uh, aspect, uh, again, from the perspective of addressing and, and getting all the 54, 55 different activities for the farmer on the same multi-sided digital platform was to bring and uh, enable him to do all different kind of procurement uh, on, on, the, on the same platform. Uh, and that's where it comes up, uh, this, this marketplace. So what you see here is, is um it's, it's different uh, uh sort of a snapshots that screenshots that we have of our app uh where we have built uh we have created digital catalogs you see we have as i mentioned that we have gone with the low asset business model approach for ourselves which essentially means that we are not becoming a node ourselves what we want to do is that we want to connect the sellers and the buyers so what we create here what we enable uh, sellers to have their digital catalogs on our platform. Uh, in addition to the offline business that they have been doing, uh, now there is one more way for them to approach uh, their customers and also to expand their uh, market uh, through these digital catalogs, which would be present on our uh, platform. <clears throat> and our farmers have access to these platforms. Uh, so it's it, the marketplace is like any other uh, matured platform, uh, matured marketplace that 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 you have. Uh, we have uh, gone through every each and every step. Again, data is important for us, and therefore the level of detailing that we have done in terms of determining the different steps, uh, how we keep that minimum, how we keep it highly intuitive uh, for the farmer. And by the way, here I can mention that we we are uh, multilingual, uh, and currently we are supporting two languages. 
Um, and, and, and that's how uh, we, we have built this entire marketplace out here. Here you see a digital catalog of uh, producers, farmer producers organization. Uh, a farmer can access, can define whether he wants uh, farm input in the farm input, whether he wants seeds, fertilizers, fungicides, pesticides, or whatever. Uh, then through that very logical sort of a way of going by the intuitive way of going, uh, can go and see the different options which are available from that particular FPO uh, and then order. It takes him to the, uh, you know, uh, the, the uh, purchase order uh, screenshot and we have a razor pay integration. So it's, it's much easier for farmers uh, to deal with. Uh, next slide, please. <clears throat> the another aspect that we found, and, and I think I should have uh, highlighted that uh, uh, when I was talking about different challenges in this industry. Uh, and one of uh, the key challenges is actually the access to the credit financing. Um, and, and what we found again, uh, the issue is largely with the small and marginal farmers uh, that how do they get access to the, the, the finance, uh, the credit finance, which, which they can really uh, deploy in, in their uh, agriculture activities uh, from the business perspective. Uh, and what we found there that uh, much of uh, different uh, sort of, uh, you know, uh, sources which are available for the farmers uh, are being used by the 15% of the farmers uh, or 20% of the farmers who have large uh, farm land holdings, uh, not as much by uh, the small farmers because in terms of showing their credibility to the way the banks and the NBFCs and the other financial institutions look at them to provide credit finance uh, is, is sort of uh, skewed uh, and therefore they don't get it. Uh, so we we worked with the, uh, you know, different banks and uh, a few of the NBFCs to determine that how the data, you know, that, that we have been picking up, uh, how we can do something out there for them to, to be more confident in, in providing credit financing to the small and marginal farmers. And that's where we, we, we have worked through this, this credit financing model, the ML model. Uh, what it does uh, is that we, we look at a different uh, parts of uh, the data that we collect. Uh, we are now in the position to provide uh, the banks uh, that what is the likely output from a particular farm uh, for a farmer. And we do it on the basis of the data that we have about his uh, farm in, in terms of the structural data that we have. Uh, we also on the basis of the uh, best practices through the process data, we could determine that uh, what is the variance, uh, you know, in terms of the best practices and uh, the practices which the farmer actually delivered uh, while going through the different steps of the agriculture. And uh, that gives a very good estimate uh, in terms of what would be the harvest. Uh, and, and that kind of detail we, we could provide to the banks. And uh, we have done a, uh, we are in the process of completing a pilot here with one of the largest private banks. Uh, and, and results have been uh, fairly, fairly encouraging here. So, so that's, that's another thing that we are doing again on the data side, you know, that how the data is helping us uh, to build uh, this, this credibility or, or give a credibility score uh, for the farmers, small and marginal farmers, uh, which could help them to access the credit financing. Uh, next step, please. Next slide, please, I'm sorry. So market side, I guess, you know, this is something that I just want to touch upon to, to highlight that the, the, the market uh, agriculture sector is huge. Uh, and, and therefore, there is enough uh, space available uh, for, for the new innovations, new startups, new technologies to come in. But what would remain uh, most critical and most important would be that how do we make it very easy? How do we make it very simple? Uh, for the for that full matijis for that uh, nanu ramjis for that ram Sarubji, to use uh, you know to to make use of that innovation to make use of that uh, new technology in a manner that it can address those three biggest aspects that that the farmer has uh, and that is what the attempt that we have been on to uh, 
so therefore, keeping uh, ecosystem approach, keeping uh, uh, a low asset uh, approach, uh, keeping the small and marginal farmer at the core of it, uh, that's, that's where we have remained. And that's how we have used the data. That's where we have used a lot of, uh, you know, uh, ML modeling uh, to, to build these uh, personalized recommendations to provide um, coverage of all these 56 different activities on a one single digital platform that we have. Next slide, please. I think uh, we are approaching uh, the time limit that I have, but but it, it's it's more in terms of scaling up uh, for, for any of the um, agri startups which are looking uh, to get into agriculture. Uh, in terms of the different characteristics of the uh, agriculture sector, uh, we found that India is pretty similar uh, with the agriculture sector in African countries. Uh, similarly, in, in a few of the Southeast Asian countries and also Latin American countries. So uh, these innovations which are there could could actually uh, could could actually expand out of India into these territories as well, and uh, could be very uh, useful for the farmers in in those countries and the regions as well. Next slide, please. Yeah, next slide, please. I just want to touch upon on the partners and uh, yeah, next slide, please. This is the team uh, that that we have. Uh, we are a small team. Uh, we we have uh, actually as of now we have seven uh, seven of us in in the agri agrico, uh, and we have we also uh, you know work with our channel partners. Uh, these are the rural entrepreneurs. So we have a team of another seven in the rural entrepreneurs uh, who are uh, our extended team. So as an extended enterprise, uh, we are seven of us and seven of us as our channel partners. And then we have two of our uh, you know alliance partners. And I just want to touch upon that because we do believe that for for us to make a difference uh, on those three aspects. Uh, for Nanu Ramji's, for Purmati Ji's, and for uh, Ram Sharoop Ji's. We have to, we, we can't do everything ourselves. We need to bring in these innovations on our platform. So we have tied up with I Avenue Labs. I think we would have a slide on that. Next slide, please. Uh, next slide, please. So here we are talking about C. So I Avenue Lab is, is uh, again a startup. Uh, which is based out of uh, Bombay Thane. Uh, they are using satellite imagery, and uh, they 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 take the satellite imagery of the farm, and through that they have been able to provide the details about the soil type, uh, the soil health, uh, including what kind of the composition of the soil is. Uh, they have been able to provide the details about the health of cultivation at different stages. Uh, they also provide the, uh, you know, uh, recommendations in terms of uh, what kind of uh, uh, agriculture activity that a farmer needs to take. For example, uh, they, through the satellite images, they find that uh, the irrigation is not reaching out uh, to, to all the uh, cultivation that the farmer has that gets highlighted. If they see that there is a disease load, which is happening in some part of the farm, uh, what kind of uh, you know measures that the farmer has to take to either restrict it in in one area only so that it doesn't spread to the rest of the cultivation or remove it altogether uh, when the, the the crop is really healthy enough for the cultivation so all these remote applications that you can do through through the satellite imagery uh, uh, they provide all those details on a month uh, on a weekly basis. Uh, so we have tied up with them and we are providing these services to our farmers and they have been they we did around 10 uh, pilots uh, out of those 10 six of them have taken it through one crop cycle and the kind of feedback that we are getting is phenomenal uh, so so that's one part the, the other um, um, partnership that we have stitched together is is again a control uh, system kind of a, a product that one of our uh, partner has built uh, that you can operate remotely uh, pumps. Uh, most of the farmers have their, uh, you know, their homes away from their farmland, maybe about 
a kilometer, two kilometers away. Um, and, and there are, you know, fixed times when the electricity is available at the farm for pump to work or if it's raining, if it's cold, if it's too hot, you know, if you need to, uh, you know, uh, you need to remotely uh, work on the pump, then, then you can you can do it uh, uh, with the product that we have created. So, uh, so we are we are looking uh, more partnerships uh, of such kind uh, where the agri startups, which are really uh, bringing out new innovation, new technology that could be helpful uh, for farmers. Again, on the three things, cutting down the cultivation cost, uh, increasing the yield, and getting the best realization for the farmer. Uh, we, we welcome them on, on our platform. So uh, that's the another point that I wanted to highlight. So I guess I'm over time by two minutes now. So uh, let me stop here and uh, let me take uh, any question answers if we have. So yeah, we can we can uh, we can take the question answers now, please. I'll be there. Yeah. No. Hello, sir. Good morning. Thank you for your presentation. My name is Aditya. Hi, Aditya. Yeah. Uh, so the, yeah. Thanks for the presentation once again. Uh, very insightful. Yeah. I just want, I have a couple of questions. I mean, just a few questions. I think most of us here are from a coffee background, as in coffee producers or in the coffee value chain, right? So your uh, what you outlined just now, like for example, have you done anything pertaining to a coffee farm? Like, have you uh, were you able to get any metrics from a coffee farm? Like you just mentioned, uh, from, sat from satellite images, you are able to assess soil type, soil health, and irrigation, and all that. So, from a coffee point of view, have you been able to do anything? Yeah, so, so Mohan Raj, uh, we want to start that. We So far, we haven't done anything uh, with the coffee growers. Uh, and uh, this is something that we are keen to do. Uh, I had a long chat with the owner of, uh, with the founder of uh, I Avenue Labs about the efficacy of uh, the solution that they have for the coffee growers. Uh, especially looking at the kind of foliage that they have, uh, you know, how far the satellite could uh, could access uh, and, and provide uh, the details that we otherwise are able to provide to the farmers. And uh, uh, his take is that uh, it's, it's pretty much, uh, we would be out there to provide all the details to coffee growers as well. Uh, coffee growers and the spices, you know, the, both them together. So we would definitely like to engage uh, uh, Aditya and and uh, take it forward. So we we want to do it. Yeah, okay, thank you. If if I may just if if uh, ask you there, uh, in terms of the entire activities that that we just sort of discussed, uh, how similar do you find with with the coffee uh, plantations and the uh, coffee growers in in terms of the you know, right from the seeds all the way to taking it to the market. Uh, is it very similar to the rest of the agriculture that we have in the country or it's it's very different? So uh, coffee as such, I think is very dynamic in terms of the uh, weather definitely plays a huge factor, number one. But there are also uh, a lot of challenges as in one cycle, one uh, harvest cycle is completely different from another harvest cycle. It can, all, it can depend, right? Mm. So right from cultivation to uh, irrigation to processing to harvest to soil and also the terrain itself is, is, is quite different. You have a lot of trees, shade trees, and so you, uh, why I asked is satellite imagery uh, yeah. to capture because of the trees, tree cover, just the terrain. Uh, it's it's a different uh, uh, way of cultivation compared to your regular crops. Like you have certain in certain areas like uh, you know in the the plains where there's only agricultural fields, right? So it'll be easy for you to capture data, right? Yeah. But in a coffee farm, each block is different, right? right? So to speak. But at least, you know, through like like you mentioned, if you can get, you know, uh, automate uh, things like you know, if we can able to, if we're able to get reports on our soil, soil soil type, soil health, irrigation, if what we irrigate, if it is actually the plants are actually taking in. So these are a little uh, complex, but these are some these are things that there is potential for you to assess so that's why i asked you have you done any work related to coffee yeah yeah, yeah. 
So uh, just to add to that, Mr. Monrad, so this is, uh, so that, as Manju said, we actually haven't done um, anything with coffee per se, but uh, we certainly have looked at other data sets um, um, that people have been building these forecasting models on, which actually include coffee as well. And it turns out a lot of this forecasting uh, model actually can benefit a vast amount of data. So if we can take a lot of this pre-learned models and only apply it for the local conditions uh, that, that we are seeing on, on, the, on, the, on, the, on the ground, you will actually be able to get come up with very good forecasting right and this is a this is a known research uh, you know understanding in the research uh, community um and and we would love to you know try that out like, like himanshu says i think it's important to apply these models in a in a localized uh, fashion of course we have some great partners uh, we, um, like for the satellite imagery we are also uh, partnering with uh, people who can provide a lot of this, uh, you know, data for the soil health and the water stress at the at the IoT level itself, which is basically integrating um, on the fields on the on well, in this case on near these blocks, these coffee blocks, if you may, and understand what is the, uh, you know, the the local the hyper local weather conditions, um, as well as the soil conditions out there. So uh, we haven't we haven't done that in coffee as 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 we as we have said, but we would love to see if you know if we can take these data sets and then merge with these very local sets and come up with very uh, tight models because it really is you know a function of how well you are able to uh, capture at that fine uh, granularity right level of granularity and if we can do that then the answer will also be as as effective. Yes, any other questions from the participants? Okay, uh, Himanshu sir and uh, uh, Krishna Lucy, like I have a question. Uh, see, basically what happens uh, uh, when I was working with uh, Manish Hyderabad and US Harvard, so uh, there are a lot of startups who, who want to come up with uh, a digital platform for uh, agriculture uh, produce and establishing a marketplace for them. The very fundamental question uh, that always used to pop up in my mind is uh, the technology penetration or adaption to the technology by the farming community. So uh, it is uh, not that great compared to other uh, well-developed countries. Uh, so especially uh, uh, in India, like uh, most of the uh, farming community, okay, uh, they are they're still uh, not having access to uh, enough uh, internet um, uh, facility or the bandwidth to uh, make 100% uh, utilization of these platforms. So how would you uh, uh, look into it? So what, what are the uh, strategies that can help uh, in uh, uh, promoting these kind of digital uh, uh, channels uh, to the agri community? Right. No, that's a, that's, thank you for the question. Um, I'm actually also an advisor in a, um, in a startup which is in the Northeast where they are solving this for tea. Um, and they've actually made significant progress um, with something called LoRa van, um, you know, deployments. So where they're part of, um, you know, a low range, um, you know, uh, radio communication setup. So it's very, very cost uh, um, effective, and uh, it's able to essentially bridge that last mile, if you may, right? So you don't need to have high speed connect data connections, not no, no requirements to be connected with telecom providers at the field because these fields can be really remote and you know there is no there is no such need you can actually set up very low cost uh, you know the, uh, of uh, these loravan uh, you know solutions and uh, we are able to read the sensor data from from these places and once you have that once the data comes to your gateway we are able to then upload it to the cloud and do all our processing right so it's basically that last mile acquiring data from the last mile that requires this connectivity the rest of it is all you know that's well understood and and there is no issue at all so there are basically you know there are very good solutions that's what I'm, uh, i guess my point is and it, I, there is some capex in more than a lot of these models 
actually a lot of these providers apparently work on um, an OPEX model as well, which we can look at. They're not, we are not in, in uh, you know, we are not working with anyone right now, but we do have very strong recommendations that we have evaluated who can be doing this in an OPEX model as well. So we can discuss, uh, we can understand how, what are the need of the particular, you know, farm that we are looking at and can engage to uh, put you up. Yeah. yeah. And, and on, yes. 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 And then at another level, just to uh, give you an example, uh, yesterday I was with about 50 farmers uh, in, in Rajasthan, right? Uh, at a remote location, about 50 kilometers away from uh, Jaipur. And I asked them three questions, you know, how many of them have smartphones? Uh, believe you me, out of 50, all 50 said that they have smartphones, you know, and they showed me. And then a few of them were saying, they said, yeah, thoda chota hai, but you know, I have this, you know. Then I asked them that how many of them are actually, uh, you know, doing something with it in terms of, let's say, are they part of any WhatsApp group or they go to YouTube or something. All 50 of them were part of one or the other WhatsApp group. Only about 60% of them was doing anything with the YouTube, you know. Then I asked them, did any one of them have ever transacted any business using the smartphone, right? uh, in terms of doing anything? Only 10% had transacted business. And then I had asked them the fourth question, that anyone in their family use their phone to transact business? And that figure went from 10% to 30%, because they said, oh, our son has our son has done something. Now, this is, this is, I guess, this is, you know, one uh, at a data level, at, at right there at the farm level, you know, how it works, Krishan will explain and how it is going and how we are looking at it. And I'm giving you another dimension of it, that how this technology, especially the digital technology, is reaching out right in the rural areas of the country as well, right? I give you one more example there. Uh, that we have these rural entrepreneurs uh, who work with us uh, and uh, they engage with us to understand, you know, what, what we are doing. They help us to reach out to the farmers to pick up this data that, that we need. They onboard them, they train them. And we actually typically look at people who are, again, 10th standard, uh, you know, 11th standard, uh, below 25 years of age. And they, they are so adept, their skill level to use the smartphone for doing different things is absolutely no less than any, anyone of their same profile in the urban area. So, so that's, that's the another uh, observation that I would want to share with all of you. Yes, yes, that's great, uh, sir. Thanks for answering. Uh, participants have shared the uh, YouTube video link of the company where you can see the demo videos of the platform. Uh, uh, because of the uh, shortage of time, we were not able to navigate you through the uh, module. But however, the uh, company has already uploaded a few uh, videos that will help you to understand uh, how this platform works. And also, I'll be sharing the contact details of the uh, resource person in the uh, chat box here. And if you have any further questions uh, that you were not able to ask during this session, you can ask him directly by phone or email. Yeah, yeah, query. please, uh, please, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, it's Manor again. I'm also from the coffee sector. Now, mm -hmm. all that uh, radar and you know remote sensing has already been used in Brazil and Colombia. Mm -hmm. We already have this data which is coming from there. But we, as uh, since I follow trade quite closely, I have a problem. You know, these big trading houses and the MNCs have this data at their hand, and they are able to use this data to manipulate the markets. You know, you can have a different ground report from what the farmer is saying and what the you know data is being reported from these sensors at the farm level. So, can I know on what crops you're actually working on? And have you figured out any way which you can inform the farmer in a better way? Because these are trading houses with some 700 or 800 billion dollars. When it comes to coffee, 70% of our coffee is exported out. So we have a lot of concern over how accurate the data and the info that is coming to us. So if you have worked with any crop, have you been able to tackle these trading houses in any way? Yeah, that's my query. Thank you. So 
look, I mean, so I quickly we, answer one aspect. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so so I, I was just saying, uh, Krishan. Yeah, uh, I was just saying that. See, currently we have worked uh, for mustard. Uh, we have the, the crops that we have worked with, right? So so mustard is is the one that we have worked the most with, you know, in terms of providing the data back to the farmers. Uh, uh, but but uh, and and the data that we have been providing about the soil and the soil type and other. When we are correlating it with the, uh, you know, the physical sort of a sample of the soil tested in a government lab, uh, it is roughly around 90% plus correlation that, that we are getting. Uh, and what they say, the actionable sort of a, a input of the soil, uh, that correlation is more than 98%. Uh, so so that's, that's what I can share with you about the soil. Now the soil, and, and mostly they were doing, uh, you know, the, the mustard kind of a crop on that uh, but that but in terms of are we dealing with the any of the trading houses we don't but uh, i will just hand it over to krishanu to to take it further krishan please no i was going to say exactly the same in terms of we actually don't uh, mr manohar we don't actually work with any other party for data set manipulation or getting it from anybody else. We are actually looking at it ourselves because like once you mentioned, our first approach of Agrico has been for the marginal farmers, right? So our entire ground up stack that we have built is for people with small holdings, right? So these are our, so our approach is really about getting the soil condition, the weather condition at that farm. And we are then processing, processing that data within our platform and then giving it out as an individual recommendation to that particular farm, right? So it's really one-on-one -on -one treatment in that sense. There is no role for another intermediary to come in and manipulate something in this. In fact, the recommendations that we showed you in some of the slides about the, the output, the APMC price and, and all of those, those are those are data sets that we are getting firsthand from the from the government that's publishing it daily, right? So the like the mustard price or the jowar price or whatever that we are then recommending that to the farmer whether to sell or to hold or to go to this mandi versus that mandi. All of that is processed in house uh, from the data sets the government is publishing. We so the so the answer is we haven't worked with anybody else who's manipulating who can manipulate this. Uh, it is a recommendation directly to the farmer because the farmer is on the agrico platform and has has a, has our application on his um, his or her uh, smartphone and is able to see this recommendation directly pushed to him. Right, um, and so that's how we work. Uh, there may be other models that, where we where we may want to give you recommendations of pricing that a board or some other manu some other larger body is processing, but those are all TBD. We haven't, we haven't, we don't have that currently in our system. Does Thanks. that answer the question? Yeah, yeah that, that does answer. Thanks. I think what I would say is this, that we are- Any other questions? Yeah, Pra Praveen, I, I just wanted to uh, say that we are keen to work uh, in, in the coffee sector. And uh, we want to understand uh, what are the nuances over there that, that we could, uh, you know, integrate with, with our system uh, to make it very relevant for, for what they're looking. So we, we are open to have, uh, you know, more discussions around that. So Praveen, if, if you could uh, please help us to connect uh, with, uh, with with Mohan Raj uh, and, and uh, Manohar and, and others who may be interested, uh, then, then we, would be, we would be looking forward to it. Pravi, can you hear me? Uh, definitely. Mr. Manch, like um, we told you, like I will be uh, yeah. connecting you with the coffee stakeholders, and also I'll be uh, sharing the details of the participants uh, who have attended this webinar. And um, as we have a dedicated incubation 
have uh, many of these uh, agree uh, uh, enthusiasts think about uh, our incubation center and trying to understand what are these innovative technologies or emerging technologies uh, that are introduced by the startups. So definitely, uh, I will be happy to connect you uh, for all those people. And in fact, uh, I uh, personally invite you and your visit AICCC personally and understand uh, uh, the offerings that we are giving you. So that would be uh, definitely helpful. And uh, we look forward to uh, see you in person, sir. Absolutely. We, we would be there. And uh, Krishanu, as a matter of fact, is in Bangalore. So so it would be easier for, for him to come over there and have a cup of coffee with you. Uh, I would I would I would certainly make a plan and be there, you know. So uh, if there are any more comments, any questions, uh, please go ahead. Yes, definitely, sir, definitely. <laughs> so uh, if there are uh, no further Yeah, I don't think so. There are any questions? Okay. okay. Yeah, thank you, uh, participants, for uh, sparing your uh, valuable time with us and uh, going through the uh, presentation from uh, Himan Shusar and his team. Uh, we uh, request you to uh, get in touch with the resource person. I have already shared the contact details in the chat box and also uh, visit our incubation center uh, uh, website. I have shared the details also. So we are uh, uh, launching um, uh, Cafe Concept Batch 9 from December 19th to 21st. It's a three days hands-on uh, training program for the people who want to uh, set up their uh, coffee-centric cafe. So you will be uh, taken through uh, uh, practical sessions of understanding the uh, science and uh, economics behind running a, a cafe. So uh, more details uh, are available in our uh, website and you can also get in touch with me. I have shared my uh, uh, phone number in the chat box. So thank you, uh, uh, Himanshu sir and uh, uh, Krishna uh, for a uh, wonderful presentation. In fact, uh, the presentation was very insightful. Uh, I believe that uh, uh, the participants have uh, uh, gone through the uh, presentation in detail and the, they got the value that they were expecting for. That's great to hear. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. Thank, thank you. you, sir. Take care. Yeah. Thank you.